My name is Mandeep Mehra. I'm a professor of medicine at Harvard Medical School and the distinguished William Harvey Chair in Advanced Cardiovascular Medicine at the Brigham and Women's Hospital in Boston, Massachusetts. Momentum 3 is the largest trial looking at comparative effectiveness of two left ventricular assist devices, the HeartMate 3, which is a novel, fully magnetically levitated pump, and the HeartMate 2, an axial flow pump, an older generation pump. These are pumps designed for use in patients with advanced heart failure, those who are escaping the effects of benefit from pharmacological therapy, most of whom are bound or nearly bound to IV inotropic support or maintain a functional status at home uh, that is um, uh, naturally bed bound to some extent. Uh, this uh, trial was um, originally started in 2015 and the two year follow-up of this trial, which was considered to be its complete follow-up was uh, concluded in 2018 with the final report provided in 2019. As a um, condition of approval of the uh, HeartMate 3 pump, the US FDA mandated a five-year follow-up of this uh, particular trial. And the current analysis is really outlining the outcomes at five years for this trial. Uh, the device itself, the HeartMate 3, is a um, fully magnetically levitated left ventricular assist device. This is a device that is uh, almost frictionless it has very wide blood flow paths and uh, is also designed with an intrinsic pulsatility algorithm that uh, prevents stasis within the pump. The uh, engineering of this device was designed to really overcome one of the most vexing dilemmas that we had with left ventricular assist device therapy, which was um, the notion of hemocompatibility related adverse events. And these included gastrointestinal bleeding, uh, strokes, as well as de novo pump thrombosis, which required uh, reoperation of uh, the pump. Uh, this uh, study is a one to one randomized study to the fully magnetically levitated, more hemocompatible uh, pump, the HeartMate 3 and the HeartMate 2 axial flow pump. Uh, this uh, study included over a thousand patients who were initially followed to the completion at two years, and then the current analysis mandated continued follow-up to uh, five years. Off note, at the two-year uh, reporting, uh, this particular study showed that the HeartMate 3 pump, the fully magnetically levitated pump, was superior uh, to the axial flow pump on indices of hemocompatibility-related adverse events, including near elimination of pump rethrombosis requiring reoperation, a halving of stroke rates, and a third reduction in gastrointestinal bleeding. What was not shown, however, at the two-year mark was a difference in survival between the two pumps, and that really left a question in the field as to whether these changes that we've seen in terms of morbidity translated into long-term outcomes. At five years, we found uh, that the HeartMate 3 fully magnetically levitated pump, in fact, uh, achieves a uh, significant survival benefit. Uh, the five-year survival now uh, is approximately 60% uh, with uh, the HeartMate 3 pump as compared to 40% with the HeartMate 2 axial flow pump. Uh, this actually translates into a median uh, survival benefit with the HeartMate 3 pump that exceeds five years of life prolongation, something we have just absolutely not seen uh, with this technology in this very, very sick population of patients. Uh, the first point I'd like to make is that not only did we uh, show and confirm a survival benefit at uh, five years plus, uh, but we also confirmed the initial superiority on hemocompatibility related adverse events. And in fact, much of the attribution of uh, reduction in mortality was a result of reduction in hemocompatibility related uh, 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 cause specific deaths in this uh, particular trial. That is not to mean that there aren't challenges with the uh, uh, pump technology moving forward. For example, we did not show a difference in heart failure or infection related deaths in this particular uh, uh, trial, indicating that we do have uh, more um, uh, opportunity in the field as we move forward. 
Uh, there are complications that can uh, occur with late uh, degeneration of these device components, particularly one of the peripheral components, the outflow graft, can in fact uh, have some constriction or narrowing over time, which um, uh, results in low flow states, but can be very easily mitigated if diagnosed and surgically or percutaneously interventionally treated. So this is something that um, um, clinicians have to stay vigilant for with this particular uh, pump, but this hasn't really uh, resulted in a major negative in terms of its long-term survival. What we're really pleased to note is that for the first time in a population of patients with a, um, a median survival that is less than a year, these are I IV inotropic therapy bound patients with advanced heart failure who are no longer responding to pharmacological therapy as they should, uh, that we can in fact prolong the lifespan by over five years. And that is something uh, not seen in this uh, field uh, before this observation. Yes, uh, we, we believe very strongly that patients who are transitioning from chronic uh, heart failure, who are very stable on um, guideline-directed medical therapy, who now are escaping the effects of these guideline-mandated medical therapies or are unable to tolerate this. For example, these are typically patients who are having repetitive hospitalizations. These are patients unable to titrate uh, guideline-directed medical therapy to goal, or we are having to reduce this uh, therapy down in these patients, um, are uh, likely candidates for this. Patients who require more and more diuretic therapy in a staircase manner to, in fact, keep them stable are all candidates for this particular therapy. These are classically patients who are nearing the need for uh, IV inotropic therapy use or require IV inotropic therapy use during hospitalizations, but also bed-bound patients, patients who are, in fact, uh, uh, suffering from a very, very poor quality of life with advanced heart failure are all uh, particularly good candidates for this particular treatment option.